Do we have homework questions? for theta. So remember that A is the real component, B is the imaginary component, B is the number part, not the I part. So in this one, B is 2 radical 3. And again, the book wrote it the same way that I wrote it yesterday, um, because it's just math talk, and uh, you can put the I wherever you want, but again, um, most of the time, the math people put the I in front of the radical, again, because you don't want it to, to overlap there. But I know some of my people in six periods were confused. They thought B was just two, uh, but the radical three goes with that. So if you can go that to find R, it's going to be negative two squared, which is four. Plus, when I square this, right, two squared is four. If the square root of three squared is just three, just squeeze my voice down. Okay, so two squared is three squared, I think is 12. And you can type that in your calculator to get that, but you just square each part. So 12 plus 4 is the square root of 16, which gives you a radius of 4. <laughs> I will maybe in a minute. Um, so that's R. You also need to find theta. And sometimes you can tell theta without having to do a lot of work. But sometimes you need to set up sine, cosine, or tangent. And it doesn't matter which one, because the theta should be the same for all of them. So if it helps, you can draw a picture, because it helps you think about where that is. Negative 2 on the real axis would be like that this way. And down 2 radical 3 is going to be um, down. Oh, that's just kidding. That's not enough. Up 2 radical 3 means that I would have a point over here in quadrant 2. So that's important that you know your angles in quadrant 2, so you give me an answer of an angle in quadrant 2. You don't have to draw the picture, but if it helps you, draw the picture, right? You have a radius of 4, this is negative 2, this is 2 radical 3, and then you can do sine, cosine, or tangent. I usually just do sine. Sine is um, B over R, or opposite over hypotenuse, which is 2 radical 3 over 4, and then that just reduces to radical 3 over 2, right? So if, you, so if you do cosine, you would get negative 2 over 4, which is negative 1 half. So no matter which one you do, even if you do tangent, it still should be the same angle. What angle in quadrant 2 has a sine of radical 3 over 2 or has a cosine of negative 1 half would be uh, 2 pi thirds, right? So if theta is 2 pi thirds and if r is 4, then I can say 4 times the cosine of 2 pi thirds plus i sine of 2 pi thirds. Or you can do the, apparently it's pronounced kiss, it's in your book, yeah. kiss theta. I don't like that, so <laughs> it's just weird. I always say CIS. <laughs> Does that help? I think there were a lot of issues with the, the r on there. Um, some people are having issues of like, yes, you're going to get a different sine and cosine value, but the theta is the same angle that gives you that value. What else you got, Matt? You can just do r. r would be the square root of 3 squared, which is 9, plus negative 3 squared, which is 9, which is the square root of 18, 
which is three radical two. If you graph that, that's three on the real axis, negative three on the imaginary axis, that would be right down there. And if it's directly in the middle of the quadrant, like it's always going to be the pi force, which is, this is one that I wouldn't do psycho center tangent because I would just say, oh, that's seven pi force. But if you wanted to, you could do sine of theta equals b, which is negative three over r, which is three radical two. And that's just negative one over radical two negative radical 2 over 2. So in quadrant 4, what angle has a sine of negative radical 2 over 2? It has to be 7 pi force. So I can say 3 radical 2 times cosine of 7 pi force plus i sine of 7 pi So 18 is one that you have to use your calculator on. Right, and that's something that I really want you to get to the point of realizing when should I be giving the exact answer and when should I be giving it a, a decimal answer. Pi 12 is not from my unit circle. I don't expect that you use those happening like thinking of those terrible things in chapter 5. Um, I just, you just type it in your calculator. So, uh, in radiant mode on your calculator, like you're just going to type in the square root of 7, three modes, square root of 7, and remember on the calculator, when you type a square root, it starts a parenthesis, so you have to close it to tell it when to uh, stop taking the square root. And I'm just going to multiply by the cosine of pi 12, and I just get. 2.56. I have to round it because it's forever. And then I do the same thing for um, the sine times the sine of 5 twelfths. And I get 2.90. So that's what that you just have to get. Oh, I did something wrong. <laughs> Right. This one's right. This one's not right. I don't know what I mean. Maybe I forgot. This one's right. Um, 2.68. Okay. So definitely on your, your test, you're going to have a little bit of both. You're going to have stuff that, that you have to do the exact value. You do the circle stuff. You're going to have a couple that you're just going to get some decimal tests. You don't need to do that now. Today we're going to, I'm going to give you three formulas of how we can work with the complex form of a trace number um, and adding and subtracting one. Multiply and dividing is not so bad. And then I have one more formula today um, on how to take the power. Uh, and then that's what we're going to stop today. And then Monday, um, which is the, the third part of this, which is the whole thing I'm is like finding inputs using this. It's definitely a little more complicated. Um, and so we can that for day all in itself. But yesterday we did um, trig form of a complex number that you can write that as r times cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. This is just two of them, right? So I, I use r sub 1, r sub 2. This means two different uh, trig numbers. If you're going to multiply these together, um, you just multiply the r's. So that's really easy, right? You're just going to multiply the r's. But then you're going to add the thetas. So you're going to multiply the r's, and you're going to add your thetas together.
Yes. <laughs> So once you have that one, um, it's kind of easy maybe to think about what we're going to do when we divide. When we divide two complex numbers in trig form, we're going to divide the R's. And what do you think we're going to do with the thetas? Subtract them. So we're just going to practice. Sometimes they're in radians, sometimes they're in degrees. Um, I always think if it's in radians to begin with, you should give me your answer in radians. If it's in degrees, you can give me uh, degrees. Um, also, you want to pay attention whether it says to leave it in trig form or leave it in standard form, because it determines what work you have to do. Let me see if I can use. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm trying to save some paper. I squished these up yesterday. We have all that white space on the paper. I put two on one today. Um, so this is just multiplication. Oh, look, I think I forgot to write what I was trying to do. <laughs> want to add some more to number two in a minute. Uh, number one, we're going to multiply two cosine of pi fours plus i sine of pi fours times six cosine of pi twelve plus i sine of pi twelve. I'm going to show a little bit of work on this one. You don't have to show all this work every time. It's always nice in your notes so you can see where this comes from. So you're going to multiply the R's. I'm going to say 2 times 6. And then I'm just going to add my theta. So I'm going to have cosine of pi fourths plus pi twelfths plus pi sine of pi fourths plus pi twelfths. I mean, that's probably a step that maybe you'll do in your head or on your calculator. You won't show that every time, but it's just nice to kind of see the formula. So that means my new R down here is 12. And then remember, you can just add on your calculator, just leave the pi off of it. But that's just 1 fourth plus 1 twelfth. So common denominator, that would be 3 pi twelfths. So 3 pi twelfths plus 1 pi twelfths plus 4 pi twelfths. Reduces to five thirds. And once you do one of them, right, this, it's the same angle all the way through, which is why that they have that CIS form um, that you can write because it's it's the same angle for both of them if you know what it means. And notice this says give the trig form, which is my favorite directions because it means I'm done, right? That's in trig form. I'm done with the problem. Yeah, you totally can write it in the CIS form that you could write CIS pi thirds. If you'd rather write that than that, you can do that. I can divide here. So we're going to make this one up. We're going to divide by, um, let's say, two cosine of pi thirds plus pi sine. So notice on the top, there's no R there, but that just means that there'd be a 1 there, right? So if I divide those, that's just going to be a 1 half, or if you like decimals, you could say 0.5. And then you just got to remember that you subtract the angles. So I made it really nice that they were common denominators already. Uh, 5 pi thirds minus pi thirds is just 4 pi thirds plus I sine. And again, leave it in trig forms means you can leave it like that. Or if you like the shortened version, don't even write this, right? If you're going to use the shortened version, the idea is it saves you time, so you can just write CIS and you can subtract and just write 4 pi thirds. Of course, if those are fine. No. Oh, no, they're not. <laughs> means I'm not right. I don't use them in the same direction, but. Standard form, I did not read my new directions. 
means A plus BI, which means I did not follow directions, and I would not get all my points on this, because standard form means they want you to work it out. And remember, why did the sentences on this? To work it out, you just have to plug the values in, which hopefully was the easier part of the homework last night, um, because you don't have to figure out what theta is. You just have to work it out. So 4 pi thirds is over here, and that's just negative radical 2 over 2, negative radical 2 over 2. And that would be 1 half times negative radical 2 over 2 minus radical 2 over 2i. Right? Just kidding. Why do you let me do such things? I, I wish you guys ever told me when I was wrong. You just, you just, you just say to yourself, I think she's wrong. I'm going to let her do the whole thing wrong. And I'll never say anything if she doesn't notice. <laughs> you got to say, that's not pi, four pi thirds. Idiot, say that. I won't be offended. Sometimes I don't realize till sixth hour that I did something wrong in your class, and I'm always like, why didn't they tell me that I was wrong? I know you know. Just kidding. Four pi thirds is done here, right? So that's negative radical three over two, negative one half. Is that right? Yes? It's not right. It's negative one half, negative radical three over two. I'm totally recording this for sixth hour today because I'm leaving at noon, so they're gonna have great fun. Great fun with it. <laughs> uh, it happens to the best of us. Right? That's right. They're both negative. I got that part. That's been right the whole time. <laughs> it's the only part I've had right the whole time. I was doing forced for some reason. For some reason, I had the four on the bottom, and then I was just, after that, it was just too late. It was too late to redeem myself. Okay, so it's one half, and the cosine of four pi thirds is negative one half, and then that's going to be minus, because it's negative radical three over two, i. And then you should distribute that, right? You should have a plus b i. So finally, after I did this wrong 72 times, um, you have negative one fourth minus radical three over four. Five. See why I like give trig form better? Then I don't screw up. Uh, it's not already negative. I just made it like right, like it's it's plus i sine. So since that's a negative sign, I just change the plus to a minus. If you prefer, you can write that as plus a negative. But I just changed the plus to a minus because it was a it was a subtraction sign. And that's a positive one half out there. So if you know how you do your unit circle, which apparently I'm failing at, um, it's not so bad to do. I need an intervention. <laughs> too many things going on. Demois theorem. Let's, everybody can say that word now. Demois. Demois. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is where I think um, you maybe see a point of having um, complex form of a co uh, or trig form of a complex number. Because up until now, you're like, this is just dumb. I'd rather just work with A plus B I. Why do I need trig in there? If I asked you to do um, 7 plus 6 I to the fifth power, would that be very fun to do by hand? No, that means you need five of them. We learned first semester, like Pascal's triangle. Like, that's still a lot of work to do Pascal's triangle. Well, Demois' theorem says if you change this to trig form, there's a really quick way that you can take that to a power. And so this is one of the reasons that I think that it's worthwhile to know this. So it says if you have a trig form of a complex number, and if n is a positive integer, so you can only take this to a positive power, if you want to raise that to a power, all you have to do is take r to the nth power. That's pretty easy, right? And, and then you're going to multiply each angle times n. So it's going to be cosine of n times theta plus i sine of n times theta.
which means I could do 7 plus 6i if I put it in strict form first. Um, I could just use this formula. So the hard part is, um, the hard part is putting it in trig form first, which is why that's what you did on the, the homework yesterday, um, and then you just use the formula. Okay, so I think I have one, oh, they're both not in trig form already, so we have to do that. Let's see if I can redeem myself. Or just dig that hole deeper. Because I don't like talking, that's the reason. No, like I just was closing this, like see how I started the parentheses here? Right. And so then I have n times theta, close that parentheses, find an n times theta, but then I didn't close the parentheses that I started, like it's all times r is what I think. Okay. Alright, so step one um, is we need to put this in trig form. This is a, this is b. Oh look, it's negative one and one. Maybe you just know the answer here. Where, what quadrant would that be graphing? Over one, up one. What's my angle going to be if I'm right in the middle of quadrant two? Three pi fourths. Is that a good thing on that? So it's nice that we know that. R is going to be the square root of negative 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is just the square root of 2. <laughs> which means, actually we say some root number 4 over there, but I can rewrite this as the square root of 2 times the cosine of 3 pi force plus i sine of 3 pi force. If I have an intrigue form, then I can do DeMoff's theorem, which says I'm just going to take this to the 10th power. So I'm going to have the square root of 2 to the 10th power. And then I'm just going to multiply 10 times 3 d pi force plus i sine of 10 Square root of 2 to the 10th power is really nice because you just have your calculator and it gives you a lovely answer. But if you have a calculator that gives you decimals instead of radicals when there's a radical left over, you want to make sure, like if this was square root of 2 to the 9th power, if you know how to do that problem. Um, so just remember, if you have a square root to an even power, isn't that always going to work out nicely? Because the square root of 2 squared works out nicely. So how many square roots of 2 squared would I have? if I had square root of 2 to the 10th power. Like if I wrote this as square root of 2 squared, how many times could I write that that would be the same as square root of 2 to the 10th power? Five of them, right? So I always think of it that way. Like square root of 2 squared is just 2, and there's going to be five of them, so that's the same as 2 to the 5th. I know it does, you can do it on your calculator, and I'm fine with you doing it on your calculator. But if it was square root of 2 to the ninth, I just want you to realize you're going to have an extra square root of 2 left over. Um, and so, you know, we'll talk about that as it comes up. But this one works out really nice in your calculator. I think you should get just 32. And then 10 times 3 pi force, I'm going to simplify my fractions here and say that um, 15 pi halves. Is that true? 3 pi force. So two things to talk about. If it says give it in standard form, not from. <laughs> in standard form is A plus B I, which means we're just going to work this out which means that we don't have to really think about 15 pi halves. You can just type in your calculator if you want. Um, if it said given trig form, usually just like in the, the uh, homework from yesterday, it says where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. 
So if the answer says leave it in trig form, usually they want you to write this between 0 and 2 pi. What could you do to this angle to make it the same angle but between 0 and 2 pi? You could just keep subtracting 2 pi until you get to an angle that you know. So that's, um, uh, that's what you could do if it was in trig form. This one we just want the value of it. So since it's 15 pi halves, I know pi halves is either um, up at the top or down at the bottom which means it's just going to be 0 or 1 or negative 1, right? So you could just count Or you could think about 15 halves is what? 7 and a half? So that would be 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 7. So that's the point 0, negative 1. So the cosine is 0, and the sine is negative 1, so that would be 0 minus i. This might be my favorite problem, because you work this out, and 32 times 0 is just 0, and you just get negative 32i, which means if you took this out 10 times and foiled it all out, everything would cancel but negative 32i. Because you have to distribute this to both of them, right? To this subtraction. If it was just zero i, you're right. It would it would be different, but it's subtraction just to get to both. That's exciting, right? You know more math than most people know now. Like people don't ever remember this. That's my calculus kids. They won't remember this either, unless they're in math 137 because they just have to learn it as well. What about this one? What looks different? Besides the numbers, there's yes, yes. There's this extra four in the front, right? Um, you cannot just distribute this four in here because of that power. So this is just something that's really easy to forget. This means like when we do all this, we still have to multiply by four, which is just annoying. Why would they do that? But they do it. So just remember that we're we're gonna have this four out front, plus we have to do this in trig form. So I just try to remember to bring that 4 down as I go. <coughs> square roots shouldn't worry us that much because lots of things in our unit circle have square roots. Hey, there's a square root of 3 in my unit circle, so maybe this is going to work out really nice. That if I did the r here, r squared is 1 plus the square root of 3 squared is 3, which means that r is going to equal 2. I always like to think about what quadrant I'm in so I get the right angle. Maybe I get the right angle. <laughs> you saw earlier I failed at that. So in this one, um, 1 and then negative square root of 3. Um, so that would be down here in quadrant 4, yes? So think about if you set up the sine or the cosine. I don't know which one you like to do. I just always go sine. Sine is b over r. So that's negative square root of 3 over 2. Which I'm pretty sure is 5 pi thirds. So this is the same as cosine of, wait, what was my r? 2 times the cosine of 5 pi thirds plus i sine of 5 pi thirds. All to the third power. I think someone just the all three of it. Four is not to the third power. Think about this four up here. So we just have this four we have to bring down with us. But then I'm going to do Demoivre's theorem. So I'm going to take two to the third power. So two to the third power times cosine of the angle times that power. So it's not five pi thirds to the third. It's three times five pi thirds plus I sine of three times five pi thirds. You might see where this whole CIS form came from. 
of why it's nice because why why do we have to write it every time, right? If you just write it once, then uh, you don't have to rewrite both of them. Order of operations. Remember, we do exponents before we multiply. So two to the third is eight. Eight times four is thirty-two. It's just a coincidence. I promise they're not all thirty-two. It just worked out that way. Look at this. The threes cancel out, so I get cosine of five pi plus phi sine of five pi. So whole pi, right? So that's either going to be over at zero or over at pi. All even pi is here, all odd pi is over here. So I know that 5 pi is over here at negative 1, 0. Or again, you can use your calculator. The cosine of 5 pi is negative 1. The sine of 5 pi is 0, right? So this is like 0 i, which means you don't even have to include it. It's 0. Which means kind of like number 3 here. I love this problem because 32 times negative 1 is just negative 32 because 32 times 0 gives you no i left. I can't fit the ones that they both turned out to be pretty good. So, adding it to, or multiplying and dividing, not so bad. Dumont's theorem, not bad, but there's a kind of a few steps there, especially if it's not in trig form already. So, uh, this is 662. Notice there's only, what, seven problems there. Uh, Through 24 uh, are just, I think there's two multiplying and two dividing, and then 31, 32, and 35 are the Moss theorem, but really great. 31 and 32 are already in trig form, which that's the hard part. You just get to apply the Moss theorem. So 35 is the only one that, that you have to do the extra work of putting it in trig form first. So you have a little bit of time that you can get started on this, and then um, the plan is that. I'll be back Monday and we'll go over this. If for some reason I'm not back on Monday, I'm driving to Kentucky today because my grandma fell and broke her hip and her shoulder last night. Um, so if I'm not back on Monday, I'll just have a worksheet for you and then that just kind of pushes our plan back till Friday of having a test until Thursday. But hopefully I'll be back Sunday night and, uh, and we'll be going to do it for Monday, okay? I know you will really soon.